Ms. Fairfax has just called to see Mr. Worthing on very important business, Ms. Fairfax states. Is it Mr. Worthing in his library? Mr. Worthing went over in the direction of the rectory some time ago. Oh, pray ask the lady to come out here. Mr. Ernest Worthing is sure to be back soon, and you can bring tea. Yes, miss. Miss Fairfax, I suppose one of the many good elderly women who are associated with Uncle Jack's philanthropic work in London. I don't quite like women who are interested in philanthropic work in London. <laughs> it's so forward of them. Miss Fairfax. Oh, ah, uh, pray let me introduce myself to you. My name is Cecily Cardew. Cecily Cardew. What a very sweet name. <laughs> I can already tell we're going to be great friends. <coughs> I already like you more than I can say. My first impressions of people are never wrong. How nice of you to like me so much after we have known each other such a comparatively short time. <laughs> pray, sit down. <laughs> Quite curious. 
as he asked me to be his wife yesterday afternoon at 5.30. If you would like to verify the incident, pray do so. I never travel anywhere without my diary. Don't you always have something sensational to read on the train? I'm <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, dear Cecily, if it is any disappointment to you, but I'm afraid I have the prior claim. <laughs> it would distress me more than I can tell you, dear boy, if it caused you any mental or physical anguish. But I feel bound to point out that since Ernest proposed to you, he clearly has changed his mind. <laughs> <laughs> fellow has been entrapped into any foolish promise, I should consider it my duty to rescue him at once and with a firm whatever unfortunate entanglement my dear boy may have gone into, I will never reproach him with it after we are married. You allude me, Miss Cardew, as an entanglement? You are presumptuous. On an occasion such as this, it becomes more than a moral duty to sleep from one's mind. It becomes a pleasure. Yes, and yes, Miss Fairfax, that I entrap Ernest into an engagement? How dare you? This is no time for wearing a shadow mask of manner. When I <laughs> As usual. <laughs> Are there many interesting walks in the vicinity, Miss Cardin? Oh, a great many. From the top of one of the hills, one can see five counties. Five counties? I don't think I should like that. I hate crowds. I suppose that's why you live in town. What a well-kept garden this is, Miss Cardew. So glad you like it, Miss Fairfax. Well, I had no idea there were any flowers in the country. Oh, flowers are common here, Miss Fairfax, as people are in London. Personally, I don't understand how anybody manages to exist in the country. If anybody who is anybody does, the country always bores me to Ah, this is what the newspapers call Agricultural depression, is it not? <laughs> I believe aristocracy are suffering very much from it just at present. It is almost an epidemic amongst them, I have been told. <laughs> May I offer you some tea, Miss Fairfax? Oh, thank you. Detestable girl, but I require tea. <laughs> <laughs> Bread and butter or cookies? Bread and butter. Cookies are rarely seen in the best houses nowadays. <laughs> Hand that to Miss Burns. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You may. 
I felt there was some slight error, Miss Cardew. The man who is now embracing you is my cousin, Mr. Algernon Moncrief. <laughs> Algernon Moncrief? <laughs> <laughs> Are you called Algernon? <laughs> 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 denied if I liked, I could deny anything if I liked. But my name most certainly is John, it's been John for years. Gross deception has been practiced on both of us! My poor <laughs> You will call me sister, will you not? And just one more question I would like to be allowed to ask my guardian. An admirable idea. Mr. Worthy, I have something very particular to ask you, much depends on your reply. Where is your brother Ernest? We are both engaged to be married to your brother Ernest, so it is a matter of some importance for us to know where your brother Ernest is at the present. <laughs> Gwendolyn, Cecily, it pains me very much to be forced to speak the truth to you. It's the first time in my life I've ever been reduced to such a painful position. <laughs> I'm quite inexperienced in doing anything of the kind. But the fact is, I have no brother Ernest. I have no brother at all, and that I certainly have not the slightest intention of having one in the future. <laughs> no brother at all? None. Have you never a brother of any kind? Never. <laughs> not even of any kind. I'm afraid it is quite clear, Cecily, that neither of us is engaged to be married to anyone. It is not a very pleasant position for a young girl to suddenly find herself in it. <laughs> Let us go into the house. They will hardly venture to come after us in there. Men are so cowardly, aren't they? <laughs> Ghastly state of things is what you call bunburying, I suppose? Yes, and a perfectly wonderful bunburying is too. The most wonderful bunburying I've ever had in my life. No right whatsoever to Bunbury here! <laughs> Sir, one has a right to Bunbury anywhere one chooses. Every serious Bunburyist knows that. A serious Bunburyist? Good heavens! Well, one must be serious about something if one wants to have any amusement in life. I have a new series about Bunbury. What are you serious about? <laughs> I have the smallest idea. You have such an absolutely trivial nature. The only small satisfaction I have in the whole of this wretched business is that your friend Bunbury is quite exploded. You won't be able to run down to the country so often as you used to. And a very good thing, too. Your brother is a little off color, isn't he, my dear? Jack? You won't be able to disappear into London quite so frequently as your wicked custom was. And not a bad thing, either. As for your conduct towards Miss Cardew, I must say that you're taking in a sweet, simple, innocent girl like that is quite inexcusable. To say nothing of the fact that she's my ward. I can see no possible defense for your deceiving a brilliant, however, thoroughly experienced young lady like Miss Fairfax. To say nothing of the fact that she's my cousin. I wanted to be engaged to Gwendolyn. That is all I love her. I simply wanted to be engaged to Cecily. I adore her. <laughs> There's certainly no chance of your marrying Miss Cardew. I don't see much likelihood, Jack, of you and Miss Fairfax ever being united. <laughs> There's no business of yours. If it was my business, I wouldn't talk about it. It's very vulgar to talk about one's business. Only people like stockbrokers do that, and then merely at dinner parties. And how can you sit there calmly eating muffins when we are in this terrible trouble I can't quite make out? You seem to be perfectly harmless. Well, I can't eat muffins in an attitude, man. Right? The butter would probably get on my cup. I say it's perfectly harmless to eat muffins at all under the circumstances. When I'm in trouble, you can feel me to be consulted. Indeed, when I'm in truly great trouble, as anyone who knows me intimately will tell you, I refuse everything except for food and drink. At the present moment, I eat muffins because I'm unhappy. Besides, I'm particularly fond of muffins. There's no reason why you should eat them all in that greedy way. <laughs> Would you have just said it's perfectly harmless to eat muffins? Said it was perfectly harmless for you under the circumstances. That's an entirely different matter. That may be, but the muffins are the same. Mousy, I wish you would just go. Well, you can't ask me to go without having some dinner first. It's absurd. I never go without my dinner. Nobody does, except for vegetarians and people like that. <laughs> Besides, I've just made arrangements with Dr. Charles to be christened under the name of Ernest at a quarter to six. Dear fellow. The sooner you give up that nonsense, the better. I've made arrangements myself to be christened by Dr. Charles Holt, and I naturally will take the name Ernest. Gwendolyn would wish it. We can't both be christened, Ernest. It's absurd. Besides, I've every right to be christened if I like. There's no evidence at all that I've been christened by anyone. I should think it extremely probable I never was, and so does Dr. Charles Holt. It's entirely different in 
your case, you've been christened already. Yes, but I haven't been christened in years. Yes, but you have been christened. That's the important thing. Quite so, so I know my constitution can stand it. I must say that I, I think that if you're not quite sure about your ever having been christened, it is very dangerous you're venturing on it now. It might make you very unwell. You can hardly have forgotten that someone very closely connected to you was very nearly carried off in Paris this week by a severe chill. <laughs> Yes, but you said yourself that a severe chill isn't hereditary or anything of the kind. It used to be, I know, but I dare say it is now. Science is always making wonderful improvements in things. Oh, that is nonsense. Sorry, there are only two muffins left. Back. Back. Two muffins again. Oh, she wanted, there's only two left. Eight. 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 Of hospitality. Yeah, Alfie, I don't want you here. I wish you would just go. Why don't you go? I haven't quite finished my muffins yet. <laughs> what? Ha! 